It's Columbia Morning on the new 98.9 FM and 1400 AM KFRU. We like uh, the opportunity to learn and to hear what's new from uh, physicians at MU Healthcare. And we've got an interesting topic today. We're going to talk about brain aneurysms and uh, what is done to treat those and maybe how can they be detected rather early. And so we welcome into the studio Dr. Fahan Sadiq. I hope I was close with that again, Doctor. <laughs> yes. Um, it's good to meet you. How are you today? I'm doing good. So let's good talk about aneurysms. You. What is a brain aneurysm? What happens when somebody has one of those? Um, so brain aneurysm is, uh, uh, in any uh, blood vessel of the body, aneurysms can form. Aneurysm basically is an inherent weakness in the wall, vessel wall. And as time goes on, sometimes that forms into a blister. And if it continues, the blister can, grows into, for the lack of a better word, into a bubble or a balloon. And uh, obviously that's an abnormal wall um, of the blood vessel. And sometimes uh, that abnormal, abnormal wall can uh, rupture and bleed. So when we're talking about brain aneurysms, of course, these are small aneurysms there you know, ranging anywhere from 2 millimeter to about 10 millimeters on average. Uh, of course, there could be bigger ones too. But uh, so you're essentially talking about a very small abnormality in a blood vessel that can bleed. But uh, being the organ that we're talking uh, in, or in, in respect brain, um, obviously the consequences are catastrophic. That was going to be one of my next questions. Uh, it seems like they're always fatal. I guess they're not always fatal, but it seems like most of the time they are. Is that true? Well, uh, so uh, with with the new technologies that we have, uh, I think the trends are changing. Uh, so uh, the older data uh, from uh, early 80s uh, uh, that we have uh, suggests that about 30% of uh, patients who have ruptured uh, brain aneurysm, they die at the spot and the rest of them make it to the hospital and then have varying degrees of uh, disability based on uh, the degree of rupture because it's, uh, once the aneurysm ruptures, the disease process continues in its entire severity for up to two weeks. Hmm. Uh, and then patients start improving after two weeks. So uh, so nowadays, I think I believe that number is better because we have better health care. We have better better, better uh, knowledge. Uh, the uh, EMS are very uh, responsive, and we have a lot of uh, comprehensive stroke um, um, uh, units that are able to take care of these patients uh, 24-7. So is there a way to detect them ahead of time or a way to know that this might be happening? Are there like early warning signs? I don't know what happens when someone is uh, struggling or, or suffering a brain aneurysm. So so there are two uh, separate entities. One is a ruptured brain aneurysm. So obviously there is a lot of, most of the time there is no warning sign. Um, however, uh, for, for an individual who does not have um, headaches or even individuals who have headaches, if they have a sudden onset thunderclap headache mm-hmm. that is not really uh, re- relieving with the you know r- uh, usual uh, over-the-counter medication, they need to go to emergency room right away because that could be um, the representation of a ruptured um, aneurysm. And if you come to the hospital early enough and the aneurysm has not caused a catastrophic rupture, then we can secure it very quickly and uh, and and that obviously is the best case scenario. The second category is um, is uh, comprises of aneurysms that have not ruptured. So those are incidental aneurysms. Most of the time, they actually don't cause any symptoms. They are incidentally found as part of workup for other problems. So we do nowadays with uh, g- uh, with better imaging technology, we are doing a lot of uh, MRIs and MR and geographies for several different. Uh, reasons including, you know, um, uh, neurologic uh, disorders, stroke, or other um, uh, uh, etiologies or other diseases. And that's how we are finding these unruptured aneurysm. Sometimes if we find an unruptured aneurysm, it's better to treat it up front so it doesn't bleed later. Does the location in the brain of where the aneurysm occurs affect survival or recovery? Uh, well, uh, so... Uh, 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 I think the lo- uh, the r- relationship to location is uh, more intertwined into uh, how we treat them. Mm. Uh, however, the survivability of a ruptured aneurysm depends on um, the degree of rup- the first bleed. Mm. So if the first bleed is severe and large, if the patient is young, then obviously the disability is uh, more uh, significant. Uh, it's interesting that uh, older patients, when they have an aneurysm rupture, they tend to slightly do a little bit better because their vessels are a little more stiffer and they don't go into vasospasm. Hmm. So subsequent strokes after a ruptured aneurysm risk is lower in older uh, patient populations. One of the things that I was um, um, alerted to is that there may be a new way to to uh, deal with brain aneurysms that uh, would be not having to go in through the skull, but maybe another way of reaching them and treating them. 
Yes, uh, so uh, uh, currently is, is a really exciting time in treatment of uh, brain aneurysms. Of course, uh, being a neurosurgeon, I can find that exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, it would be <laughs> exciting for people who are going <laughs> to struggle or, or suffer with one. Yeah, no, that's true. So um, uh, nowadays we have a, what we call minimally invasive approach. Uh, through uh, in, in these approaches, we go in through a blood vessel, either in the groin or in the radial artery right at the wrist. Uh, and through those arteries, we can go actually uh, with small catheters into the brain vessels and um, embolize those aneurysms. Now, the newer technologies that, were, that have come about, uh, particularly uh, one of the newest technologies that was just approved in December of 2018, which is probably about seven months ago, mm -hmm. uh, is a web device, W-E-B, web. Uh, it's a woven endo bridge. It's a, it's a very neat device, and what it basically does is uh, you, um, what we do is we deliver the device um, on a microscopic level into the aneurysm, and once the device is in place, it prevents blood going into the aneurysm, and that's how the aneurysm clots off or obliterates or is excluded from circulation. Um, the device is, uh, is very, um, has a lot of restrictions or uh, limitations. It can only be used at, uh, for a bifurcation aneurysm ranging between 3, three millimeter to 10 millimeter, but those are kind of the majority of aneurysm that we deal with anyway. See, that seems amazing to me. I mean, yeah. to see, to be able to do what you just described, I mean, um, that's so much better than the old way of treating aneurysm. Yeah, for, for most aneurysms, yes, that's, so, uh, that's uh, much better. There are certain aneurysms that surgery still yeah. is, a, is a reasonable option. Uh, I think as, as, the, as science and technology is, uh, is uh, changing, improving, or however uh, you want to word it, but I think eventually we are moving towards a minimally invasive approach, and I think maybe 10 years from now, uh, brain surgery will become obsolete for aneurysms. How frequent are brain aneurysms? Like, for example, you as a, as a surgeon, you see one a day, one a week, one a month. Well, how frequent are they? <clears throat> so uh, if you look at population statistics, about 5% of individuals have brain aneurysm. A lot of them actually go undiagnosed. And, wow. Uh, and uh, so it, it's uh, fairly common. It's not very common. Uh, ruptured aneurysms are, uh, you know, uh, last study that I looked at, uh, approximately about fifty to 60,000 people have a ruptured aneurysm uh, per year in U.S. So that, again, is, uh, you know, based on the overall population. It's not a huge number. So that's why we tend to concentrate um, uh, most of these aneurysms into um, highly specialized centers is what we call a comprehensive stroke center. So luckily in Missouri, we, uh, you know, center for Central Missouri, MU is one of the comprehensive stroke centers. There are uh, in fact, we, there is no other um, accredited comprehensive stroke center in central Missouri. So we tend to obviously see more of it. So by by default, of obviously, we are since we are the um, uh, major center here, uh, we see more. But um, it's not as common as some of the other diseases for, mm -hmm. for um, you know, I think, uh, luckily for <laughs> Yeah. For us. Uh, so um, you mentioned stroke a couple of times. What's the relationship between a ruptured brain <clears throat> aneurysm and a stroke? So, uh, in general layman term, um, ruptured brain aneurysm is um, uh, lumped into a category of stroke. It's a different kind of stroke. It's a hemorrhagic stroke. Um, uh, however, uh, there is a crossover. So, once an aneurysm ruptures, uh, blood vessels uh, in the brain get irritated, and uh, that uh, process starts on day number three mm. and four, and it continues on to day number about 14, sometimes even longer. But that's kind of a general time period where the blood vessels are not happy, there is blood around them, mm. and they start shutting off, which is what we call vasospasm. If, the, if that vasospasm is severe enough, that can subsequently cause more strokes and more disability. And so we, we have a lot of new devices to help with that, uh, and a lot of times we are able to help with that, but uh, sometimes we're not. So it's, uh, it all depends on the severity. So what do you, what's a message to us? Is there a way to prevent having an, a brain aneurysm or a ruptured brain aneurysm? Is it uh, the same advice that we would get? Don't smoke, sleep, eat well, exercise? Are those there or is there something else? <clears throat> well, I think uh, you're right on, on, on target. I think smoking is one risk factor that is very uh, um, strongly linked with brain, brain aneurysm mm -hmm. growth and ruptures um, and, and uh, de novo incidence of brain aneurysm as well. Uh, if somebody has a family history of brain aneurysm, uh, then be aware of it. And uh, uh, typically, if there is a very strong history, if there is a first-degree family relative with ruptured brain aneurysm, then we sometimes recommend first-degree family relatives to be screened when they are at the age of about 40. So that's one way of uh, being up on top of it. Um, smoking we talked about already. Uh, but other than that, there isn't much that we can do in terms of screening other than um, just healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Glad to hear about the new processes. Anything else you want to tell us about what 
you know, your job is like in doing this? I mean, I guess they're further, you know, they're discovering new things probably all the time. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, so uh, at MU, we are uh, very um, actively involved in several different uh, research trials, and uh, there are a lot of other devices in pipeline. And uh, like I said, within the over the next ten years, uh, we will have uh, emergence of newer techniques and newer devices. And uh, every device is very exciting for us. We uh, it requires a lot of training. It requires. It is a very stressful job because all of these patients are very sick, and every uh, little um, or every small decision, right or wrong impacts their life very significantly. So uh, we take our job very seriously. We are, uh, we're all very committed to this, uh, to health care of this very sick patient population. And uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Thank Farhan you. Sadiq, who is from MU Healthcare, talking about brain aneurysms. It's um, the new 98.9 FM and 1400 AM KFRU.